Today, we're starting a new series that uh, we're calling Next Steps. And so if you have a Bible, let's go to uh, Philippians chapter one. I wanna start today by asking you about your dreams. Uh, what, what are you dreaming about today? What, what, what are you really hoping for? What, what are you looking for in your life? Like what you're, you're praying about that, that God is gonna do in your life? What, what is that dream? And, and, and I wonder if there's anything in your life right now that, that you're praying about and asking God for that, that you know, like at the end of the day, there is no way it's gonna come to fruition unless God steps in somehow and, and God actually changes and orchestrates some things on your behalf. And, and without him, it's just not gonna happen. I, I wonder if you're praying about anything on that level. And so my challenge is, is that you would join us as a, a church and, and, and there are a handful of things that we are asking God for and, and, and we know that, that, that it's only in his power and in his timing that it's actually gonna happen. And, and so I'm gonna invite you to do that, but I'm also gonna challenge you and invite you to take your next step and, and to begin to dream about and to, to begin to have a vision for what God wants to do in your life. And, and so there's two layers here. God is doing something big at Foothills Church. His presence is here and he's calling us to partner together and, and, and advance his kingdom. And, and so there, there's a part that you play in that. And at the same time, you are also taking your next step personally. And so on both levels, the challenge for you and I in this series is that we would see that and that we would have the courage to take our next step. I remember when I was a kid, I had a, a, a dream and I grew up in the 80s. Any, anybody 80s kids? And so you know what Transformers are? Anybody know what Transformers are? Like I loved Transformers as a kid. And, and I remember there were, there were these new Transformer, by the way, a Transformer was a robot that then would transform into something really cool that kids loved, right? And so there was one set that, that these robots turned into airplanes and they were called aerial bots, right? This was my dream when I was a kid because it wasn't just one, one was awesome, but the, the uniqueness of the aerial bots you see is that together they would combine and form one giant robot called Superion. <laughs> Isn't he amazing? You see, he's made up of five different Airplanes, how did they do it? They were geniuses, but they did it. And, 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 and I wanted it as a kid, it was my dream. But I had to get all five aerial bots to get Superion so that other kids would look at me and say, he's so cool, he's got all five. But sadly, I never reached that dream. Didn't get there. I got one, but I didn't get the other four. And you might be tempted to think that my parents were just not good parents and they didn't buy them for me. And you could make a case for that. I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't stop you. But I think the reality was that I was a kid. Kids want one thing on Monday and by Tuesday they want something else, right? And I realized looking back that it just wasn't a dream worth dreaming. <laughs> It wasn't big enough. It was, it was actually kind of silly in the grand scheme of things. As kids, we want one thing today. We want the next thing that, you know, the next big thing that comes out, you know, the next week. And so it wasn't a dream worth really pursuing. And, and it wasn't even a dream worth really dreaming about. In the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, God began to give me a real dream, like a, a real passion and vision for something. And, and that was to plant a church. Uh, but I was fresh out of college, no experience, just got married. I, I didn't know anything about planting churches at that time. And, uh, and so I didn't know what exactly that meant, but, but God began to show me and wise counsel around me said, okay, well, yeah, maybe one day, but, but what you really need to focus on is your next step. 
And so, okay, I, I knew my next step was I needed to go to seminary for three years and do some internships at, at some churches. And, and so that was part of it. And then my next step was to pastor a, a church for a few years. And then after that, my next step was to uh, go and, and be a student pastor at my dad's church and did that. And next step was to go back to school for another three years. And, and so by the time I, I kind of got through two degrees and, and uh, a little over 10 years of, of ministry experience, it was like, okay, that everything is kind of lining up to where it might be my next step is to actually plant a church. And so at the same time, my dad leading his church, he was like, okay, I feel like God wants me to plant a church, our church to plant a church. And so I believe it's gonna be uh, in Maryville. It needs to be in Maryville, Tennessee. And so he looked at me and he said, Trent, are, are, are you called? Do you feel God? You know, I know we've talked about the dream and the vision. Uh, do you feel like this is the next step for you and, and do you wanna lead this new church in Maryville? And I said, no, I don't. <laughs> and you might think, wait a minute, I thought you had a dream and I thought this was what you wanted and then all of the school and the years and all of the stuff was pointing you to that. I'm like, yeah, but man, I loved the job that I had. I was really comfortable. I loved our house, I loved where my kids were going to school. I, I loved being close to my parents because we had four little kids and free babysitting is priceless. I was very comfortable. I had a network of friends, close friends that had been serving with me for several years. And, 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 and I didn't wanna walk away from all of that. I, I, I knew if I was gonna take my next step, it was gonna take me out of my comfort zone. I mean, yeah, I had school and experience, but what really does anybody know about planning a church until they do it? And, 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 and all the, the chaos around setting up and taking down in the school and, and new people and, and how are we gonna get this thing off the ground? There were so many unknowns and, and so many problems that were in my mind, but it was a dream worth dreaming. And after much prayer and resisting, God finally convinced Mike and I that it was our next step and that we did need to pursue him. And I'm so thankful that 13 years ago we said yes and we took that step in the thousands of lives that, that, that God has brought together called Foothills Church and the marriages healed, the, the young people and, 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 and adults that God has saved and, and the ministry that has taken place in this community and now in Knoxville and, and literally all over the world as God has sent us around the globe to do ministry and, and I'm thankful and I'm thankful that every time we kind of get stuck God shows us the next step. Uh, it was 2013 and, and uh, we had just bought the building adjacent to us. And, and if you're from Maryville, you know, it was a bowling alley, a restaurant, an arcade. And, and uh, we, we moved into that building from the school and we started to have church and kind of in a makeshift kind of side where the arcade was and using whatever space we could for kids. And our first step was to renovate kids space. And we did that. And a little bit later, we renovated uh, the auditorium so that we could actually have a, a real space. And, and so we were doing that, but when we bought the building, when we made these renovations and, and yeah, we had uh, you know, a little bit of a spike of growth and, and uh, that was great, but then we kind of leveled off and, and here we have made a lot of financial commitments and we're still a young church and not very many people even know about us. And it was one of, if not the most stressful years of my life begging God, like God provide, you have called us to be here, but, but we need resources, God, to pay bills and to move forward. And, and I just remember there were weeks where, where you know, really only me and maybe one other person knew kind of how stressful it was financially if we were gonna even be able to make it to the next week. And it was in that moment where I would just cry out to God, and I would say, God, you got me into this mess. You got to get me out of this. And our growth had kind of plateaued and financially we were struggling. And, and then on December 21st, 2014, I get a phone call from Maryville City Police and I pick up the phone and yes, this is Maryville City Police. Is this Trent Stewart? It depends. <laughs> what exactly do you want, my friend? A truck has just run into your church. What do you mean a truck has run into the church? What are, what are you talking about? You just need to get over here. So I hop in the car, I drive over here and a tractor trailer somehow, I don't know how it happened, but crosses 
the, the highway, goes up the hill and just barrels right into the side of the church over here and plows through. And I'm talking 25 plus feet. It pours into the church. Luckily, nobody was here. Sprinklers are broken, uh, started to flood. It was a, it looked like we were testing missiles here. It was a disaster. And it was two days before our Christmas service. <laughs> and so um, you ever pray prayers that, that God would do something and then you feel like he didn't hear you correctly? <laughs> it's like, I'm already struggling, God, and now this. I said provide, not collide, <laughs> right? So, so here we are, we're two days away. The, the city condemned the, the building. Like you can't have church here on Sunday. And so I'm like, great, you know, what are we gonna do now? Well, luckily they got it cleaned up. And in one day we were able to uh, get it opened up, but we didn't have kids space. And it was just, it was hectic to say the least. That Christmas was, was crazy. Uh, but what's interesting about that is I was on the news, it was in the papers, all over social media, and here this young little church that nobody really knew about started getting all this airtime. And can I tell you what happened after that? In the next quarter, our church grew by 33%. And then our budget grew, giving grew by 40%. And so that, that season taught me that I just need to stop trying to figure out how God is gonna do it how God's gonna grow our church, how God is gonna take us into the future and just focus on my next step. And I think that's a lesson for all of us. That you've got a dream to, to have a family, you've got dream for a business, you've got dreams for career, you've got dreams for your grand, you've got, you've got a vision and a dream for things, but, but what we have to be cautious about and what we have to recognize is we have to be willing to take the next step that is in front of us. Every time we've gotten stuck, God shows up. And every time God shows up and shows us that next step as a church, as we take that step, it's not easy. We take that step and we give and we sacrifice and we serve and God provides growth and more people are saved and more young people are saved and more families are built stronger and, and we receive the blessing and God gives us the blessing of actually serving with him and accomplishing something much bigger than any one of us on our own. You see, Jesus promised to build his church. He promised to build his church and the gates of hell will not stand against it. He promised and told us to, that he would be with us as we go and make disciples, baptizing and teaching those how to follow Jesus. He said his job was to seek and to save that which is lost. He said, sometimes you have to leave the 99 to go after the one. He said every time even one person gives their life to Jesus, heaven celebrates. You see, this is God's dream. It's his vision. It's not any one man's vision or, or woman's or a, a leadership team. God is calling you and I to, to invest into relationships. And, and as we grow in Christ and, and as you and I don't just meet on Sunday mornings, but we are the hands and feet of Jesus in this community, doing good in this community, seeking that which is lost. God blesses and God does miracles in your life and in the lives that you seek to do ministry to. You see, we're called to meet spiritual needs and physical needs and emotional needs. And God has ordained the church. He has called the church to gather and unite around this gospel and, and, and given us this great commission to do just that, change lives with the message of the empty tomb. And so that's what we do and that's what we're called to do. And God hasn't finished his work here at FC. He's not even close, but like every dream, every vision, we get stuck from time to time. And I will tell you that there are, there are some ways that we are beginning to get stuck as a church. Uh, we're, we're stuck in Knoxville unless we can renovate the space that God has given to us. We've got to take our next step to renovate a movie theater into a church so that literally thousands of people can be impacted by the gospel in that community. We're kind of stuck at our Maryville location until we can, we can expand and, and, and offer more parking. We're parking over hundred cars off our campus every Sunday just to maintain what we have, but there are empty seats in this room. 
And, and, and God wants to fill these seats, but, but for that to happen, we have to do the practical thing of providing space. God is calling us to meet the cries of our community for counseling. It's, it's such a huge need. And, 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 and so as a church, we believe our, one of our next steps here is to take a step towards developing our counseling ministry. We've got a part-time person now, but we need to hire new staff and, and get training and, 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 and expand that so that we can meet the the, the needs that are, that are in this city. And in this series, I wanna I- encourage you to pray about this and understand what our next step is as a church, but also your next step. I mean, of course, we're doing hundreds of things. I mean, we're expanding our orphan care ministries. We're expanding our global ministries. We went to Honduras and Africa. We'll continue to do that. Went to Clarkston, continuing to, to meet needs in those areas. Our kids ministry, Jingle Jam's coming up, by the way. It's an awesome night. Our kids ministry, student ministry, continue to reach the next generation and build them up on our journey process. So like people are growing left and right. And, and uh, people, I mean, pastors calling me, what, how are you guys doing this? And what's that look like and how and what? And I man, God is blessing that process. But when I, I talk about our next step, I'm highlighting these three goals. And I want us to to begin to pray about these three goals, pursue the dream of developing disciples in relational environments and taking our next step into these areas. Knoxville renovation, counseling ministry startup and our Maryville parking expansion. So we've got to take a next step as a church, which means you have to be willing to take your next step as an individual. God's called you here and together God is calling us to make a difference. And you see, you you have a next step. Every single one of us have a next step on your spiritual journey. And it's important that you use your time and talents and treasures to pursue that, that calling that God has upon your life. But I wanna make sure as we jump into this today that you have a dream that's worth dreaming about. That you're not just, your, your dream isn't just to have a, a wife and to have a family, but that your dream and vision would be that you would raise a godly family that your dream and your vision would not just be to start a business or to have a career, but that you would dream a dream worth dreaming. And that would be how does your career, how does your business, how does your leadership intersect with eternity and the call that God has on your life to impact the kingdom of God? How do you leverage the resources that he gives to you? How do you leverage the talents and the relationships that he gives to you in that organization? organization, to be able to bless people and to be able to be the hands and feet of Christ and to be able to call people into their calling and and point them to Jesus and continue to pursue the dream of building God's church. The truth is though, some of us aren't following a dream we're dreaming. And I wanna challenge you, don't follow a dream that is gonna lead to regret. Don't follow a dream that's just gonna lead to emptiness or to call you away from God's will in your life. The truth is some of us are stuck today spiritually. You're stuck spiritually. Maybe you would say that, yeah, I I do love Jesus, but I don't feel like I'm growing. Maybe you would say there was a moment in my life in time where I felt close to the Lord, but today I just don't feel close to Him. You feel stuck spiritually. And you know that there are some things that need to change in your life. And you may already know what needs to change. But I know that a lot of times, most of the time, when we think change needs to happen in order for us to grow or in order for us to be happy, we often think that what needs to change are our circumstances, things that are outside of us. Well, if my wife would just get her act together or my husband would get his act together, then I could grow. If my kids would stop acting crazy, then life would be good. If I could get uh, more, you know, an increase in my salary, then things would get better. We think outside of ourselves. We usually think of certain situations that God needs to change or a relationship that needs to be fixed. And if that happens, then we'll be good. But God says what needs to change most is not your circumstances, it's you. You see, God is in the business, not of changing situations. He's in the business of changing hearts. So his good grace, his loving grace 
is, is, is calling you and, and challenging you and working in you to change your heart today. And for every single one of us, when we think about spiritual growth, we have to realize that growth is a process, it's not an event. It's a process, right? Growth is a process, it's, it takes time. It takes energy and it takes focus and, 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 and life for, for us is so short that we don't, wanna, uh, we don't wanna miss the opportunities that God puts before us. It's why we have to take our next step. And growth always requires change. It requires change and that means we've gotta get outside of our comfort zone and, and so it's a process and, and, and you might actually think of it in terms of golf. Some of you like golf, um, may not be good at it, but we know the, the goal of golf is, is to get the ball in the hole, right? Uh, the, the, the goal of our life is to love God, love others, pursue the great commission. That ultimately, we're called to worship God in those ways, right? And so when you think about spiritual growth, um, I want you to think about it in terms of, of, of golf here. And so when you play golf, like when you get up to the hole, you get to the tee box, the first club that you use is the what? The driver, right? We're thinking par four, par five here. You pull out the driver. And when you hit the driver, right, the goal is to be in the fairway. Amen, right? That's the goal. <clears throat> and so you get the biggest club. This is where whoever you're playing with, everybody's there watching you play, right? So you're all gathered there, a little pressure. Everybody's watching you, right? And so when you, when you hit the driver, the goal is to hit it down the fairway, right? It's the loudest club. It's the biggest club. It's the strongest club. It gets the ball moving in the right direction closer to the hole. I want you to think of Sunday morning as the driver. Sunday morning is the driver really of your spiritual growth. If, if you try to play golf and you try to get the putter out on, on, in the tee box, you're in for a long day, right? Why? Because, because this first step is in the tee box, you get the driver out because this is the one that gets the ball moving down the course. And some of you, uh, maybe your next step is just to focus on committing to Sunday. I gotta go to church. If you're not committed to Sunday mornings, if you're not committed to that spiritual growth, this is where the word of God is taught. This is where everybody gathers together. You can use your gifts to serve on Sunday morning. You're taught the Bible, you're challenged, you're encouraged. You see all the people that gathered, you realize you're not alone. Right, this is the driver of your spiritual growth Sunday morning, but it's not over after Sunday, right? The next shot hopefully kind of lands in the fairway somewhere, and then you're gonna take out an iron. And hopefully you're about 100 yards, 150 yards away from the, the green, and, and so you're gonna get your irons out and you're ready for the next shot, right? The next, ooh, look at that, it looks good, right? Don't critique, just appreciate. <clears throat> So the iron shot is your small group. The iron shot is your, your ministry. The iron shot is, is the journey process. But if you think that you can finish out the hole just by hitting it with the driver, it's not over. That's, that's the start. You've got to take the next step, which is you got to pull the iron out and you got to get involved in a small group. You gotta use the, God's design that he's given to you and get involved in ministry and start actually being the hands and feet of Jesus and start actually impacting someone's life other than just think about yourself, you're thinking about others now, right? But it's not over because hopefully you're gonna drop this shot right on the green and then what do you need? Well, now you gotta pull out the putter, right? And the putter, you gotta be able to read the green, right? You gotta be able to read the green. Hopefully you can get it in one shot. Usually gonna take two, maybe three if you're like me. But the goal at this point now is, is, is to get the ball directly into the cup, right? And so this, this will get you there. The putter represents the spiritual disciplines in our life. Just like you have to read the green, you gotta read the word of God. The, the spiritual disciplines in your life are reading the word of God. It's, it's studying the word on your own. It's having a personal devotion. It's having a prayer life. All the other spiritual disciplines like memorizing scripture, these are things that continue to take you further down the path, taking your next step to get the ball into the hole. But just like golf, when you finish one, you're on to the next, right? And so some of you are, are, are like just focused on the first shot and, and you're hoping to grow spiritually or connect to God, but you, but you haven't taken your second step. Or, or, or and by not doing that, you're not ready to take the third step or the fourth step. 
See, our spiritual growth is a lot like golf. Some of you are worried about shanking that first one, right? <laughs> you, 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 in your life, you shanked one into the woods and then you gave up. You got into a small group, you, you chili whipped one into the water and you said, ah, I'm never gonna do that again. Chili whip means that you just hit it bad and it goes into the water, right? And some of you just give up. Well, just like in golf, you gotta press on, right? You gotta go find the ball or you just gotta drop one. You don't have to count the stroke. I don't care. Count it if you want. Keep playing. You gotta keep playing. Some of you have given up. You gotta keep playing. Sometimes in life, you hit a bad shot. Sometimes in life, you, you, you go into a direction that you didn't intend to go, but that doesn't mean it's over. In fact, a lot of times God uses the bad shots in the greatest way to help you get better and become who God has called you to be. So here's what I want you to hear. And then we'll get into our scripture. Your next step is the most important step. Please stop focusing on the bad shots in your life and focus on your next step. You, you can't take your next step if you're constantly turning around, remembering and focusing on the bad shots in your life. Those bad shots don't need to dictate your future. We all have them. I have them. Everyone experiences them, but God is calling you to take that next step. Your next step is the most important step. Will you take it? Let's turn to Philippians chapter one. This is a passage of scripture that will call us to take at least two steps today, right? Here's what Paul says. Remember, Paul's writing to a church in the city of Philippi. It's where we get the name Philippians. He's in prison because he's preaching the gospel. He's thrown in prison. He's suffering. And the whole letter that he writes is about joy in Christ. So the lesson right there is, is, is huge for us. But here's what he says at the beginning of the letter. He says, I thank my God in all remembrance of you. When I remember you, I thank God. Uh, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and then in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. The first step that some of us need to take today is a step to belong, a step to belong. I love how he says here in verse, three, verse five, he says, I thank God because of your partnership in the gospel. This, is, this verse is why we don't call our, our, our partners at FC members, we call them partners because it gives us a, a sense that we are a part of something. We're not just a member, like a, a member of a country club where I have a card and I get the towel in the locker room and I can come and go and, and, and not really, uh, nothing really is required of me. No, a partner, just like a partner at your firm means that you own this. That this, is, this is your vision. This is God's vision for us. And, and so we are taking ownership together. Some people think that this, this idea of belonging is a feeling, right? I feel like I belong, but it's not a feeling, it's a commitment, right? It's a commitment that say we are joining together, partnering together for the gospel, right? What do partners do? Well, he says here in this passage in verse four, he says, in every prayer of mine for you all, I make my prayer with joy. See, a partner prays for each other. So we, we as a staff pray for you every single Monday morning. We're praying all throughout the week in our small groups. Tonight, when we gather for a night of worship, we're gonna pray over each other. We're gonna pray in this room for what God's gonna lead us to do as a church. Church partners pray for one another. Uh, verse seven, he says that we are partakers of grace. So partners share a gift and the gift of God's grace. And that unites us in a powerful way. We, we share this, this, this gospel message. We share the, the gift of salvation, which means that, that our relationships are gonna be even closer than some of your blood relatives. 
that don't know Jesus. Why? Because there is something that unites us when we unite around the gospel. We have been saved by God's grace and he's called us to a higher calling. Partners share a gift. Partners also share a task. Jesus said to go and make disciples and teach them and baptize them, right? So we share this task together. In verse seven, he says that we're called to defend and confirm this gospel. That's our task as we share the gospel, we're defending it. No, Jesus is alive. No, 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 Jesus is real. Yes, Jesus does want to change you. He does have a plan for you. He does love you, right? This is defending the gospel. Hey, this week you get an opportunity to defend the gospel by exercising your right to vote. And so I pray that this week you will go vote for those men and women that share godly principles, right? And aren't crazy and, 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 and that understand biology and science, right? And so we get to exercise our right this week, but we, we do that because we share a task. And that task is to share the love of Christ with this dying world. Partners also love each other. There's a love and affection that, that build between us. In verse eight, he says, how I yearn for you all with affection. He's, he's talking about this desire that, that he has for them in, a, in this loving way that, that he cares about them. Like for some of you, this is just a seat that you sit in. It isn't a group of people that you love. And God is calling you to belong to this community. He's calling you to build relationships so that you can not only give that love, but actually receive that love as well. He says it's his prayer that our love would abound more and more. In other words, that it would grow, right? Paul's prayer is that our love for God would grow and it would result in acts of love for each other. So this is the direction God wants us to grow spiritually. Listen, sometimes millennials, let me pick on you for a minute. Anytime we talk about next steps for millennials, they think, oh, that means my next step is to get a pay increase. My next step is I gotta change jobs. My next step is I gotta get more followers. No, 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 no. God might not be calling you to get a raise. He may not be calling you to a different place. He may be calling you to be consistent because you're not consistent. He's calling you to be faithful, right? In, in, in the place that you are. And so when we say your next step to belong here, it's, it's loving others that would, that would then lead us as we love God to love others and, and lead us into that setting. In verse six, he says, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ. So listen, no matter what you face today, be encouraged that God's work continues in your life. No matter what bad shots you've hit, he is bringing you to completion. The work that he started is getting completed in you. Growth is a process, not an event. And even when you don't realize it, God's working. He's working even today through the difficult situation at work or in your marriage, in your family, at the office. And so when you take your next step and when you submit to Christ, he's gonna move you forward in your faith. He's gonna grow you. Even in the midst of that difficult conversation, you can have hope that God is working in you, right? He's bringing it to completion. When you feel like you're losing the battle against sin and you keep, you keep failing and you keep going back to that sin, you can have hope that God is working in you right now bringing that work that he started to completion. He's not finished. When you've got another fight with your spouse and you feel like yet again, you keep hitting your head against the wall in that relationship, you can have hope that what God started, he will complete in that relationship. Too often we see obstacles uh, to our growth as, 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 as that, as obstacles. Instead, what if you looked at that obstacle as the process? that God is bringing into your life to take you to the next step of growth. Your growth is not simple. It is a process. Your challenging situation isn't going to turn around overnight. Paul is in prison, he's suffering, and yet he has still found his joy. There are gonna be days when you feel tired, that you feel confused. There are gonna be days when you feel like the promises of God's word aren't being true for you. 
There's gonna be days when you don't feel like it's working and you're gonna feel alone or you're gonna feel hopeless and you might feel like quitting church or quitting your faith or quitting your family. But in the passage that we just read, don't miss the hope. In the midst of Paul's suffering, he shows us that there is hope. You don't have to understand everything, so stop trying. In fact, you won't understand everything, but you can know this, the God that does understand everything knows exactly what you need right in this moment. The God that holds his hand, that, that, that in his hands, he holds the universe. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows every detail and, and is in control of every single dynamic. But you've got to realize that the one who is calling you is actually asking you to take your next step. And so the question you've got to answer today is, do you want what God wants for you? Or do you only want what you want for you? Do you only want your plan? Or do you want what God wants for you? Because that's the question that you're fighting against today. That's where the frustration is coming from. That's where the anger really is building from because because you're wanting what you want instead of allowing what God wants for you. See, so often, like we, we see this on TV all the time and we, we miss the point. Uh, there's a show called Fixer Upper. I know it's an old show, Joanna Gaines, all, Chip, good show. My wife loves it. Uh, some of you get it. You, you, you like to buy Fixer Uppers, right? You go to a house and, 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 and some people just don't get it though. They see a house and it's got, you know, smells, and it's old and the brick is ugly and the fireplace is out of place and the cabinets are all messed up. And, and they see like this, this old dilapidated rodent filled smelly uh, house and they say, no way, can't do it. Different person goes to the same house and they see what could be. They see, oh, okay, well, if we move that wall, then it'd open up. And if we just put new hardwood down, then it'd feel good. And then we just paint this and we could move this. You see, it's the same exact house. Both buyers look at the same house, but only one buyer looks at it with hope. The hope and, and the courage and the belief that they can take something that's messed up and turn it around for good. You see, how do you view your house today? I'm not talking about your physical house, your life. See, your life is a fixer upper, believe it or not. It's been broken, it's been battered. But the question is, do you have hope that, that, that what's been messed up and, and what's not quite perfect can be transformed for God's glory and used for God's good. As you look at your house today, do you have the hope that God can actually transform it? You see, that's where the hope comes from. No matter who you are, God wants to transform you. He wants to change you. He's making all things new, right? And so for many of us, he's rehabbing our house. And this rehabilitation is actually a process that God is intricately involved in, but he's calling us to take a step to belong. Secondly, we wanna make sure that we are taking a step toward eternity. We wanna take a step toward eternity. He says here that he is, he is making us complete, getting us ready, pure, blameless for what? The day of the Lord, the day of Jesus Christ. Now. If you were just in the last series, you know, and you're gonna read the Bible differently from now on after that series, whether you realize it or not, you're gonna see the day of the Lord more than what you saw previously because it's everywhere. Paul is pointing to our eternity. Your eternal home as a believer is heaven. So every step you take of faith needs to be leading you towards heaven. It needs to be leading you towards an eternal impact. So get a dream worth dreaming about. More money is not a good dream. How many stories have we heard and, and, and we've read about that show us that money is, is not gonna bring happiness? Having a great career isn't necessarily gonna make you happy unless you leverage that career for the kingdom of God. How do you use the resources that God is blessing you with to fill up heaven? Like those are the questions we wanna ask that take us towards our eternity. 
We're going to be there for all eternity. 70, 80, 90 years is all we get here. Live for eternity. Prepare for eternity today. So what's your next step? For some of you, it's walking away from sin. It's, it's turning from sin. For some of you, it's gonna be, be taking your step to belong and go to base camp. Or for some of you, you, you took that step, but then you just kind of bailed out. Your next step might be small group. It might be camp two, camp three, right? For, for, for some of you, it's gonna be, okay, I've done that, but now I, I gotta get into the word of God. I gotta begin a, a daily devotion and read through a book of the Bible or you know, begin a prayer life or get mentored. What does that step look like for you? Whatever it is, God's calling you to take it. Every year in this season, I think it's hard to keep the, the, the temperature set right at our house. It's cold one day, you're turning the heater on. The next day it's warm, so you turn the air back on. Or maybe you just say, I'm not touching it. We're just going with it. I don't know, but... I don't know about you, but as a dad, I feel like one of the things that God has called me to do is own the thermostat. Nobody touches it but dad. <clears throat> and they try, they're sneaky little, you know, they'll, they'll try to knock it down, but I'll, I know. And then who touched it? Wasn't me, wasn't me. Nobody owns up. I don't know if that happens in your house, but they cry about, oh, it's too hot or it's too cold. Or, they don't see the bills, right? I do, and so I'm trying to keep it in line. And, and, uh, but I've got a choice to make every time somebody complains in my house, just like you do. Every time they complain about the temperature, I have a choice. I can turn it up, I can turn it down, I can meet their needs, right? Some of us don't understand that in a lot of ways, the community has a temperature as well. And the community cries out to us. And the community cries out to us in various ways. And sometimes we allow their cries to, to offend us and it causes us to be angry at them because they don't believe like us or they don't see things like us. And so we just get angry at the community. Well, just in the same way, you're not gonna get angry at your kids when they're hot in your house and they're asking you to turn the air on. What we have to do is we have to understand that the cries of the community are ways for us to say, okay, how can we step back and, and, and meet the needs of those cries? Every single week, people call us, my, you know, my, my marriage is about to end in divorce. Can I talk to a pastor? My, my, my kid is struggling with their sexual identity. Can I talk to a pastor? My, 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 somebody in my family passed away. Can I talk to a pastor? I, I, I'm, I'm depressed or I'm feeling anxious. Can I talk to a pastor? All over the community, the, 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 the cries are of brokenness. And, and, and so often people are turning to the world for advice, you know, worldly wisdom and psychology. And see, the truth of God's word is so important for us as a church to hear that cry and to be able to meet that need. We know the only hope they have ultimately is the hope of the gospel. The only hope we have for our country, as great as voting is, is the gospel. Raising up this generation to understand the truth of the gospel and, 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 and encouraging them and challenging them to actually live in it. And so we've gotta shake ourselves out of our career building vision and realize that God's not just calling us to build our kingdom, he's calling us to raise the next generation. And some of us are so focused on getting what we want in our marriage that we are neglecting the larger, bigger needs in our community and in our city. You know how you heal your marriage? You, you serve the Lord as you serve your spouse. And, 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 and God begins to do miracles in your relationships as you take your next step spiritually. It's not just about fixing a spouse. It's about pursuing the gospel. And that's what we miss. So when this series, as we talk about all of these next steps personally, we're also talking about big steps as a church that we want to take and that God is calling us to. We got to, we got to renovate. It's going to cost $370,000 just to do that. So how, how has God blessed you to be able to join and partner and belong with all of us to take this step together? We talk about counseling ministry startup. We need to hire staff. We need to get training. We're going to, we're going to have to do some things in order to take our next step We've got a part-time person now, about 20 people a week, but hundreds of people are, are asking for this. Community is crying out. Are we gonna respond? And then finally, 
the Maryville property expansion, it's, it's gonna be at least a half a million dollars. This is, a, this is just over a million dollars that is required to do these things. And, and so again, this is the need. Some of you have been blessed financially and you, you're gonna be able to take large, large steps towards this, or you work for an organization that would get behind counseling ministry, yeah, we support that. We don't go to church there, but, but our organization would, would help in that because our city has one Christian counselor in Maryville. It's all you get. If you wanna to go to Knoxville, six week wait, at least if you want Christian counseling. Right, so the cry's there, the need is there. I think this is something even, even our community would get behind but it's gonna take every single one of us, first and foremost, praying about how God would call us to do this. And so that's my question or my challenge today is that you would begin to pray about how God would lead you to give, to serve, to take your next step towards the vision that God has called our church to take. By November 20th, we wanna ask you to give by then. It's a, it's a one-time gift, but, but it's also an ongoing commitment to give. People over the last several years, uh, as we do this every year, it's a, it's a one-time sacrificial gift. Then we have people that tithe weekly. They give 10% of their income. But then when it comes to the vision fund, they'll give over and above towards the vision. You say, people do that? People give 10% and then they give over that to the church? What about their credit card bills? Well, it's, it's called discipline. <laughs> and it's called taking your next step of faith that would that would handle your resources in a biblical way and live for eternity. And not just live for the next transformer that comes out. And so I wanna challenge you to begin to pray. Come tonight, let's worship together. God is in this place. I know God is in this church and he's not finished yet. And he's calling both of us, all of us to take a step to belong and a step towards eternity. Let's pray together. Father, we love you and we praise you. Bless our time. You've been good to our church. We know there are many more people that need to hear the gospel, many more people, Father, that, that need to hear the truth of your word. And you're calling us to take our next step all over the place, all over the room, our represented people who need to take that step, put it in their heart, God, show them, tell them, let them understand and, and, and be convinced of what that step is. They would walk with you, encouraged, to do that, God. And we'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory for it all. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'd love for you to like the video and leave a comment. And we also encourage you to subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a post from Foothills Church. To learn more about FC, just head to our website by going to foothillschurch.com or by clicking the link in the description below.